Hi everyone, this is Clint from Persuasive Evangelism, and today we're going to go over this book, Why Bother with Church by Sam Alberry, um, and other questions about why you need it and why it needs you. Now, first off, my book is in really poor condition. I really keep um, my books in really good condition, but I was reading this book, and I was almost done, and then I couldn't find it. And like three or, three or four days went by and I could not find the book to finish it. And then I found it and it was out in the backyard. So it was out there for three or four days. Luckily it didn't rain, but the sun and the morning dew did its damage, so it's ruined. Um, but um, this is a really good book. Um, it's, it's based, there's a series of these little books, each on a different topic. You'll see these little icons here. There's a book for each of these little icons, and this one's about the church, so this one's lit up. I have a few others that I'm going to read, um, but and they're by different authors in the series. So Sam Albury, he's really great. Um, I actually went to um, a week of um, summer like Bible school for for a week in Oxford, and he was the one. Um, he started the day. He did a morning teaching on. Uh, on Mark, the first chapter of Mark. Um, so we did like worship music, pray, and then prayer, and then he he spoke for about an hour each morning. And so we went for the five days. He went over the the whole first chapter of Mark. It was really good. Um, so I got this book. Um, he also has a really good dry sense of humor, which is in the book as well. So um, it's easy to read, but pack full of good information. Um, our, the chapters, the sections are, what is church? Church isn't actually a building, it's the place where the church meets. Um, well, it's the Christians, that's the church. Why do I need church? What makes a good church? How is church run? How do I survive church? How can I be a good church member? In conclusion, what is really going on? So this book is probably focused more for Christians. Um, maybe you've fallen away or you know stop going to church so this is a good refresher on why you should be going to church um so uh, one is why do i need church can i be a christian without church uh so it basically says um in christ jesus you are all children of god through faith for all of you who were baptized into christ have closed yourself with christ there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you all are one in Christ Jesus, Galatians 3, 26, 28. So once you become a Christian, um, you're part of this family um, body of Christ um, for people all around the world. And it says, this is true to the whole wide church, universal church. Through faith in Christ, we are one with Christians around the world we may never even meet. Whenever we are in the world, we are not far from family, but it's in the local church that this oneness to this partic particularity expressed and worked out. Paul likens a church to the human body in Christ. We, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. So all of us are family as Christians throughout the world. Um, so church is therefore not a meeting you attend, but a body you belong to. And it says... Um, you can't serve Christ without serving his people. Matthew 25, 40. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Uh, so we're there to help other Christians as well, other non-Christians as well. But um, So what, what do I miss out if I don't join church? Uh, the biblical answer to this is heaps, a lot of stuff. Um, so Hebrews 10, 24, 25, let us consider how we spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day is approaching. Um, so he's basically telling, you know, we're there to encourage each other, you know, through this life. And let's see. Uh, the encouragement will take a variety of forms. The New Testament talks about building up, building one another up in the faith and of times when they need carefully to correct and sometimes even rebuke one another.
the church is there for the loving challenge and accountability. Um, and it says this, John 13, 35, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another, as we love each other and, and through Christ, um, the world will take notice. Um, a significant pack, part of the church's evangelistic impact will be due to the quality of relationships it demonstrates between its members. Um, and it says needy and needed. Um, your church needs you. You may not have the gifts you wish you had, or that seems the most important or visible, but you are vital to the health of the church as anyone else. There will be a contribution you can make to the church that is unique to you. Each of us are, have all, our, you know, God's blessed us with each of us with our own gifts and abilities, and each of us are unique, and all of us contribute to the church, the body of Christ. And then he talks about what makes a good church. And I wanted to get to one other section. If I can find it. How do I survive church? So some Christians have left church. Um, and it says, um, you know, church can be hard work. Uh, and some people call, you know, church is boring. They don't want to go. Um, and this says, uh, what do you think is actually going on at your church on a typical Sunday morning? Um, for all its faults, your church is still a community that God has gathered and in which he is present by his spirit. If the idea that that is boring, then the problem might be with us and not with the church. Perhaps we're interested in the wrong things. And it says, Matthew eighteen twenty: when two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. And it says, um, he, uh, Hebrews 10, 24, 25, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And then, um, church has hurt me. Uh, you know, the church are based on humans and there's all, you know, everyone's, no one's perfect in this world. And it says, uh, but he says, he goes through a lot of this, but near the end it says, uh, the journey back to church will need to be done gently and slowly, but at the, at the same time, you need to be up for making the journey. You need a church, and there's a church out there that needs you. Uh, church has exhausted me. Um, there's two aspects of church we have to keep in mind. The human aspect, the church is a group of very flawed people who meet regularly on Sundays and through the week. People do not generally change very quickly. People make mistakes and there are tensions and disagreements that are difficult characters. There are difficult characters. Not much would look immediately impressive to a first time visitor. But then you have to think of the spiritual aspect too. The church is a group that God has gathered together to himself and to each other. Despite even vast socioeconomic or cultural differences that might exist between them, they are bound together by something that transcends anything the world can rally around. So in church, there is real community and sharing of life. All right. And then how do I become a good church member? This is good for every Christian. Attending is important. You know, we need to make that commitment. Involvement. Praying for the church, praying for people in the church. Serving, using your gifts in the church and helping giving taking a financial stake in the church submitting and devotion be devoted to the church um and then he says what is the future of the church uh he says three things um growth jesus said i will build my church and the gates of hades will not overcome it matthew 16 18. jesus is very clear the church is ongoing building project his intention is to grow and strengthen it. And it is not going away anytime soon. Hardship. There will be opposition from the surrounding culture, temptations from church, and the devil standing behind it all. Jesus reminds us that the world hated him, so it will not be unusual for it to hate his people also. John 15, 18. 
but then glory, that is what we're looking forward to. The final glimpse we have of the church in the Bible comes right at the end. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, come down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. The church is spoken of as a society of people perfect, perfected by heaven and utterly enthralled by Jesus Christ. Whatever ups and downs might come in the years of he ahead for a particular congregation and denominations, there's the ultimate future of the church. And then one th final thing, what's really going on? Um, and it says, but someone was watching what we did, quite a lot of someone, in fact, because, um, oh, they said they, you pro they probably didn't know that there, there was a church service to begin. Our entire meeting went on without them being aware. And then it says Ephesians 3, 10 to 11. Though the church, the manifold wisdom of God, made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. So um, when God's people gather, the spiritual world is watching. Though you can't see it when you meet this Sunday, the spiritual power powers, both those loyal to God and those who oppose them, will look on. And they no won't notice what they won't notice what either impresses or disappoints us about our church. They won't be stuck by the stage and sound systems, the parking lot and the band, and the broken heating, the peeling paint, weak orange juice, and the struggling organ. They'll be struck instead of who is meeting there. All the diverse people, you know, from all around the world, ages, different cultures, and so on, um, different backgrounds, um, are sitting together and loving each other because they know the Lord Jesus loves them and died for them. So there's a lot going on. So I like how he ends basically saying, why on earth would I not bother with church? So this is a great book. I totally recommend it. Lots of great information in it um, by Sam Alberry. I might need to get a new copy since this one is pretty messed up. But Why Bother with Church by Sam Albury. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. God bless.